So, welcome to the Mike and Cannon Show. We have a lot of things to talk about today. I want to get into it. First thing, in order of business of the Boston Celtics winning the championship. Uh, much to my dismay, I hate the Boston Celtics. I'll forever hate the Boston Celtics. I will ever, I will forever be a Boston Celtics hater as a Hawks fan, as a Kobe fan, as a LeBron fan, uh, uh, as somewhat a Knicks fan, as long as they're going against the Celtics. I don't really like the Knicks either. All you people up Northeast are super obnoxious about your team. Oh, the Celtics are so great. GOAT franchise, yada, yada, yada. Whatever. But I got to give credit to where credit's due. The Celtics won the finals. So far, they're the best team of the 2020s. I don't want any debate about that. They have a nasty eight-man rotation. Drew Holiday, Jason Tatum, Brown, Hortford, White, Hauser, Chris Stapps, and Peyton Pritchard. That whole rotation is completely disgusting. They can all shoot. They all crash. They all give effort. They all rebound. They do everything it takes for you to win. They can do just about anything. Also, Coach Missoula, guy who deserves a lot of credit, he wins the title in his second season as head coach. First year, you guys were calling him, you guys were calling that man to be crucified his first year, right? After they lost to uh, the Miami Heat. And they're like, oh, Joe Missoula is terrible. He can't win a championship. To me, that was crazy. But in his second year as coach, he won a championship. Turns out he did it on a, a, a torn meniscus, which is kind of crazy. Uh, but either way, they did really well. Congrats, Joe Mazzula. He's going to be around for a long time. I think the chance for a Celtics repeat. Let me address the elephant in the room, ladies and gentlemen. I think the chance for a Celtics repeat is higher, significantly higher, than it's been for any other team in the 2020s. Higher than the Nuggets. Higher than the Lakers. Higher than any other team in the 2020s. I think they have the highest chance to repeat by far this team is built to win they have the pieces to win and they can get a little bit better each year i think we could be watching the next dynasty right i think it could be the next dynasty and it would be much to my dismay because once again i will stress this entire video this entire segment i hate the boston celtics i'm the biggest celtics hater that you do know will know and that will ever exist but I do give credit to where credit is due. This team is built to win. This team has great players. They are so good that they don't even require their superstar to play like a superstar. The Boston Celtics have a chance to be the next dynasty. As far as the Mavericks, uh, a couple things we learned here. Kyrie, he's getting old. Luka's got to get in better shape. And the Mavs are one star away. I think Mavs general manager Nico Harrison should be on the phone with the agent of Anthony Day-to-Day, -day, A. Disney, whatever you want to call him, Anthony Davis, right now. Get him out of L.A. Anthony Davis in Dallas helps everybody. Everyone. I think it even helps L.A. I said a couple months ago, I think Los Angeles should blow it up and rebuild. That's what I think they should do. That's what I think. LeBron, you're old. You got to go. I'm sorry. A.D., you're not going to be our number one option. We ain't won a championship in four years. It ain't going to happen. L.A. needs to rebuild. I think the Mavericks could capitalize on that needing to happen. AD going to the Mavericks makes them a top three team. Dallas will be back at it. It'll be a very interesting offseason. Uh, Luka, on the other hand, played good on offense. Looks like the Pillsbury Doughboy on defense. We need you to lose weight, Luka. Luka, if you're going to be our star, we need you to play some defense. He looked good in game four. Every other game, he looked garbage. He looked terrible. It was a travesty, right? People get in front of Luka Doncic or Kyrie Irving, and they see food. They see Kyrie Irving guarding them and say, oh, I'm going to the basket. They see Luka Doncic guarding them and saying, oh, I'm going to get me an open shot. And I understand Luka. I understand that he was given a lot of effort on offense. He was injured, banged up the whole time. I understand that. But if you want to be a star in the NBA, you have got to play better defense. You got to at least get in somebody's way. Be a Curry-level defender. Steph Curry will get in your way. He ain't no, he's not no lockdown. I'm not asking you to be Gary Payton or Michael Jordan or LeBron. I'm just asking you to get in front of someone. That's it. I think Luka can do that. I also think he has to lose weight too. Uh, this series was a travesty for Kyrie Irving. It was awful. Uh, other than game three, it was terrible. Straight up. It was bad. Really bad. I don't know what it is about Boston, but every single time that dude goes into Boston, it's like he's forgotten how to shoot the basketball. It's like... It's like the Mavericks were pressured in ways we have never seen them pressured before. It was crazy to me. It was crazy. And, and Kyrie Irving, a guy who's super skilled, super clutch, I never expect that to happen to him. Seen to be on his woke path, you know, trying to be positive, shook the Celtics' hands. I love you, Kyrie, but you got to play better. Now, 
Moving on to my next topic, after the NBA Finals, I need to address this. And it is Caitlin Clark. I have some very strong opinions surrounding this woman and the WNBA. Very strong opinions. Now, of course, the Caitlin Clark hate, I want to address that first. While it may be a little bit understandable because the media is favoring her, she complains, she trash talks, and her being made to seem more important than other players, which I disagree with, I also equally disagree with the hate. Now, I will say, I don't like everything that Caitlin Clark has done, right? I'm not calling her sinless. I'm not saying she's the peak basketball god. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. She has made mistakes. When uh, Kennedy Carter got in a little scuffle with her, she had elbowed her in the face before the scuffle. Nobody heard about that, right? You didn't think I did my research, but I did. You know why? Because I'm me. I did the research. Thanks to my dad and sister. They told me that. I looked it up. I was like, oh, oh you're right. You're right. So let's give that some attention. She also complains about the rest. She's talks a lot of trash, but I don't agree with the way WNBA players are treating her. Why do I not agree with that? Well, number one, Caitlyn cannot control who the media favors. Why are you blaming her for that? Blame the media. You don't hate Caitlyn Clark for what the media tries to make her. She did not do that. She didn't. I don't care what anybody has to say about that. You cannot tell me that that lady has done anything to control the media's narrative. That's what the media wants to do. You blame the media, not the player. Next thing, whether you like it or not, it is not her responsibility to shout out other players, politicians, people, or whatever. It's not her responsibility. What other people say, what other players do, that's the responsibility of the WNBA and the media to address things like that. They ain't the responsibility of her. Her job is to play basketball. That's her job. She said it simply. Uh... Number three will be WNBA players have not necessarily treated her uh, great at all, right? There's no veteran coming saying, hey, man, it's going to be all all right. I don't see that happening. I don't. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't see it happening. I just don't. Also, she has a massive target on her back, and considering the amount of pressure she's facing every day, four and five, it must be frustrating. It's hard. She faces tremendous amounts of pressure. And if you don't want to hear from me, you can hear from Serena Williams. She said, in quotes, they only, they only hate you because they can't do what you do. That's the message she gave to, Clay, to Caitlin Clark. That's the message. I will read it again. They only hate you because they can't do what you do. That was the message. So if anybody wants to come out and whine and complain and do all of that, take it up with me, take it up with Serena Williams, take it up with anybody backing her up. But the hate is completely unwarranted. Now, going into the rookie hazing, I understand it's part of the sport. But Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark have been subject to a lot of hate. And it prompts questions. Number one, why aren't vets coming to defend these rookies? And number two, why are people trying to pit these two against each other? Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese have continuously, continuously congratulated each other on their games. Admired, publicly admired each other's games. I think it is terrible how the WNBA has treated both of these people. They brought, I mean, they brought more attention to the league than any other class, any other draft class in history. Any other two players, two rookies in history. You got to get better. If you're the WNBA, you have got to treat your stars better. If you are veterans of the WNBA and want to see the league grow, you have to treat these rookies better. You got to treat them better. You can't get great without producing great. You won't produce great if you treat your rookie stars like trash. It's just not going to happen. Now, as far as a business and analytical standpoint, because, you know, I love my numbers and I love my analytics. Despite the popularity increase, the WNBA is still set to lose about $50 million this season, which is bum terrible, by the way. It's bad. So, I decided to make a list for myself. What can the WNBA do to really start making money? At least at least making a small profit. You are not profiting $1. You're losing $50 million. You're losing a Pat Mahomes yearly salary in the WNBA per season. You're losing Patrick Mahomes every year. Literally, it would take Pat Mahomes' entire contract without taxes, without FICA, without Medicare, without any of that. 
it would take a Pat Mahomes contract to make up that $50 million. If you want to do the math that way. Either way, ways that the WNBA can really start making money. Number one, better sponsors that are specifically geared towards the ladies. Clothing, makeup, food, entertainment, music are all sponsors that would generate more money for the WNBA. And not all of them just appeal to ladies. A lot of them appeal to men as well. Number two, make the game more exciting. I'm sorry, guys. Some WNBA games, unless there's a big star, they are boring. People don't want to watch them. Right? Extend the season. Speed the pace of the game. Increase the quarter lengths so more points are scored. It looks are important. I mean, they are. When someone sees your MVP averaging 22 and 12, they're going to be like, no, okay. Right? It doesn't matter what the numbers were. It doesn't matter where the league is. That's what people are going to look at. The NBA has given us an expectation on what a star basketball player's stat line and career looks like. The WNBA, the very least, in my opinion, the very least they can do is extend the quarters. Extend the quarters, make the numbers look better. That brings more appeal. That attracts more eyes. It attract, 22 points attracts a lot less eyes than 28 points. How do you fix that in the WNBA? You extend the quarters. Give people more opportunity to score. Open the scoring up. Easy, plain and simple. It happened to Caitlin Clark in college. She's averaging 30. What was everyone talking about? Scoring record. 30 points per game. It's plain and simple. Number three, smaller stadiums. The league is still growing. If you ask me, you should not have a stadium that is bigger than seven to 11,000 seats. That's all the WNBA needs right now. The league is growing. You are not the NBA right now. You cannot go into State Farm Arena and fill it up unless you're in a very special circumstance, like, like the championship or something. Yeah, maybe a host city could be an idea, right? Number four, better marketing. It's self-explanatory. The WNBA has to find a better way to reach their crowd. They have to. They have to. And number five, which I think is very important, better treatment, more marketing of your stars. Why do I not see Asia Wilson? Why do I not see Brianna Stewart? Why do I not see Sabrina Nescu, Caitlin Clark, and Angel Reese everywhere? I should see them all over the place. I should see them on the billboard in New York. I should see them here in Atlanta. I should see them in a Skims outfit on Instagram, wherever. Right? But I should see them, WNBA. I need to see your stars. I've got to see them. And you have to treat them better. You've got to. Now, where does the league go from here? Well, if you need to look at Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese the same way that the NBA looks at Magic and Bird, right? Neither one of them were, were geared to be a villain, right? They were just rivals. They were just, uh, I'll say that they were competitors because they ended up becoming best friends. They respected each other's game. Always have. Right? It's the same path. Yeah. Magic and Burr played in the college championship. You know who else did? Kaitlyn and Angel Reese. Go figure. They got drafted high. You know who else did that? Both Angel Reese, Kaitlyn Clark. Same draft class, unlike Bird and Magic, but they're both drafted high. They're both highly touted prospects. Easy. It's a huge opportunity to take the lead to the next level. You just got to find a way to market, and you have to find a way to put your stars in winning situations. The NBA took it to the next level with Magic and Bird. The question is, can the WNBA do the same thing with their two stars and Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark? Now, my take, I think the WNBA is a great game. I think it's a, a good way of watching basketball. But the WNBA right now is a mid-level product. Mid-level. At best. Great game, great stars, but it's a mid-level product. The WNBA is not used to being great. They're not used to being at the top right now. But it was the same with the NBA in the 80s. Same thing. They're not used to that level right now. The league's going to grow. You have to grow steadily. You have to pump everything you can into your stars. The WNBA is a great, great great idea it's a great game it has to become a better product now moving on to the next thing mr gravante davis on saturday june 15th davis knocked out frank martin who was 18 and 0 davis is now 30 and 0 with 28 of those wins coming by way of ko this guy's dominating his division there's nobody in the world nobody in the universe that is beating Gervonta Davis at 135. He is a top three to five fighter in the world. However, 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 Mr. Davis, I still need you to do one thing. One thing. One thing. One thing. 
Devontae Davis, in order for you to be a legend, you need to unify the titles. All of them. Devontae Davis holds one belt right now. Just one. One. And one division. One belt. He holds one belt in his division. That ain't enough. I need you to unify the titles. Yeah, good, good. You you beat uh, you beat Frank Martin, who was 18-0. Nice. Now go beat Lomachenko. Now go fight Shakur Stevenson. Now go fight Ryan Garcia again. Unify the belts. Fight the big fights. Yeah, Frank Martin is good, but we don't know who Frank Martin is, right? Frank Martin's not a belt holder. Frank Martin is probably a dude that wanted a good payday, and he got it out of you. Got knocked out doing it, but he got it out of you. Any other fight other than a fight for another one of those belts for Devontae Davis at this point in his career is useless. It's worth peanuts. It's worth nothing. He t Every single time Gravante Davis steps in the ring and he's not competing for another one of those belts as of right now, it's a useless fight. You get nothing good out of it. You get to pad your record a little bit. No one cares about that, right? I'd rather be 33-5 and five and, and unify all the belts than be 30-0 and, and only have one, right? Now, I love Gravante Davis, but I'm a man of constructive criticism, folks. And right now I am constructively criticizing. That's what I'm doing. Constructively criticizing criticizing any other fight other than a belt fight ain't worth nothing now i'll say this davis over the next year if he can unify the belts he'll be one of the greatest fighters if not the greatest of this generation he will do i think he can do it yeah i would love to see him fight lomachenko love to see him fight shakur stevenson those are two champions go ahead fight them yeah and lomachenko's old he should be easy for you right but I want Davis to get a challenge. I want him to fight the best of the best. And I think if he does that successfully, I will come back on here and you will see me saying that he is the greatest boxer of our generation. But for right now, congratulations, Mr. Davis. You're fantastic. We all know it. We all love it. But I want to see you unify those belts. I want to see you unify those belts. Last topic for the day. Been uh, secretly avoiding this because I don't like talking about criminals, especially when their trials are still underway. But seems like this guy right now is pretty cooked, ladies and gentlemen. His name is Diddy, the Diddler, whatever you call him, P. Diddy, Puff Daddy. So far, Mr. Diddy has been caught assaulting his girlfriend on camera, which was criminal, by the way, which was disgusting, by the way. He's been accused of having inappropriate relationships with various people. I am being careful with my words here. There may be people who are watching this that don't know what I'm talking about. But if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you might want to scroll away from this section. You might be a little too young for this Diddy news. Diddy has also allegedly forced people to, par to participate, excuse me, forced people to participate in actions they did not want to participate in. He has drugged people and allegedly he has also contributed to the beatings and possible... Um, I'll just say harming of individuals using my words wisely here through the last couple weeks this man has had his honorary Howard University degree taken away he's had his key to New York taken away he's been dropped by various businesses and business partners and he has lost all of his respect if there was any form in the first place what is my reaction to that as an HBCU student as you can clearly see Diddy getting his honorary degree from Howard University taken away. Now, trust and believe me, I am the last guy who wants to come up on here and, and talk about another black man in a demeaning way. Trust me, I'm the last guy that wants to do that. But as a black man, as someone who is a member of an HBCU, as someone whose father and mother went to an HBCU and graduated, by the way, Prairie View A&M and Howard University. Go ahead, look them up. Go ahead, look them up. You will find them. Trust me. We cannot stand for this kind of disgusting behavior. We cannot support that. The city of New York cannot support that. The businesses that were previously in business with Diddy cannot support that. We need to come out 
and publicly state what he's doing is wrong. Right? Everyone everyone wants to try and, you know, they're going to try and say, oh, everyone's turning on him. And the answer is, yeah. Wouldn't you? Have you heard that your best friend was doing these actions? You wouldn't turn on them? Man, please. You would say, look, bro, I must, I, I, I have respect for you, cool, but I can't support these actions. That's exactly what all of these companies, all of these HBCUs, all of this education, all the cities, that's what people are saying. This man is going to be accused of high-level crimes. He's going to be found guilty, very likely found guilty of high-level crimes, and he is going to be in jail for the rest of his life. He's going to be in jail for the rest of his life. It reminds me a little bit of the Mr. Kelly situation, right? When he got caught doing what he did, he had to serve some time. Lost his respect, lost his honor. Everybody didn't want to be around him. It's the same thing happening here. And Diddy arguably has done things worse, right? This is the stuff we've uncovered, right? Imagine the stuff buried underground that no one else is going to find out. Again, I don't want to demean but I would like to publicly come out and say no HBCU student, no HBCU grad, no member of a city, nobody with a daughter or son, no mother, no father, no grandfather, no nobody can endorse these disgusting, decrepit, and awful actions. Nobody can. I'm sorry. Nobody can. I don't want to demean them, but that's just how I see it. Without further ado, thank you for watching. I'm going to end this video. I have a little uh, Spain documentary thing coming out soon when I was in Spain. You know, your boy's been traveling around the world, discovering, doing what I do, of course. That's why I had to take a little break. I was abroad for 10 days. I was like, uh, I was like, no, it was about, about maybe a month ago now. About maybe a month ago. I came back uh, well, a lot less than a month ago. I was there for 10 days, 11 days. But I'm here now. I got a little thing coming out for you guys. I hope you guys enjoy. But without further ado, I'm going to end this video. Thank you for watching.